Hello NFL fans, I'm Chris Terrell. I'm here for RotorPros.com to bring you a look at my DFS NFL cheat sheet for week 6. We're looking at the main slate on DraftKings and FanDuel this week. And we're just going to start by having a look at the RotorPros main page. Um, right at the top, you're not going to see it here in this picture, but you click on Articles, go to NFL. And that's going to take you to our NFL articles this week. We've got a lot of articles coming out. We've got an early look from Josh. We've got cash game plays, uh, which is something I put together. Um, today, later today, I've got a GPP value plays article coming out, looking at a couple uh, low price guys that may be getting a little bit more opportunity going into this week. And so there's a lot going on. I also provide a DFS NFL cheat sheet that I'm going to kind of go over a little bit today, as, long, as well as some of my top picks for week six. So let's get started. Uh, so first of all, on the matchups page, you're going to see uh, team and opponent for each matchup. The bottom two are obviously going to be your, I'm just going to uh, hide those rows for the moment just because we're just going to be looking at the main slate this week. So this is all your main slate games. So we've got the spread, the projected points for each team, the over-under in that game. So the first thing that kind of stands out is, once again, there are a lot of games with high projected scoring. Um, we've got Tampa Bay, Atlanta at 57 and a half. We've got Pittsburgh, Cincinnati at 53. We've got the Rams and the Broncos at 52. There is snow expected in that game, so that could be something. Uh, something I did also hear on the NFL Network this morning on Good Morning Football is Jared Goff has never played in the snow before, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, just kind of narrative-driven. I'm not really narrative-driven myself. I'm more stats, in case you can't tell by the cheat sheets. But uh, moving on. We've also got uh, total offense for each team. So we've got uh, passing yards per game, rushing yards per game, and then uh, how many points per game they score. That's not fantasy points, that's just overall points. Um, just to kind of give you a look at, uh, at offenses. So as you can see, Tampa Bay and Atlanta are both uh, pass heavy and a little bit lower on the run side of things. Up next, we've got a little bit uh, more advanced passing and uh, opponent passing defensive stats here so as we can see Tampa Bay is fifth pass in, when looking at passing ranks Atlanta is sixth and both defenses are not very good uh, against the pass as you can see here which gives you a high differential so we're looking for green in this column uh, for good matchups for the passing game same goes with rush um, both of them are kind of ranked very low in the rush as well as the defenses aren't very good against the rush so we could see uh, maybe an uptick in those rushing offenses this week because of the defenses they're going against but for the main part the reason we're seeing a high over under this week is because of um, the passing defenses so then at the end we've got fantasy points against the position these are DraftKings. Uh, it's going to be very similar for FanDuel, maybe one ranking uh, difference, but it gives you a look into how many fantasy points um, they give up per position, quarterback, wide receiver, tight end, and running back. So as you can see, um, so this is opponent. So when you're looking at Tampa Bay uh, in row six here, Atlanta has given up. They rank 30th in fantasy points against quarterbacks, 27th against wide receivers, so they've been very good against tight ends, ranking 11th against tight ends, and 30th against running backs. So they've given up a lot of points to everyone except the tight end. On the other side of things, Atlanta going up against Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay has been 28th or worse ranked against every single position. So um, getting a piece of that Atlanta-Tampa Bay game is going to be huge this week. So you can do that. You can go and you can research any one of these games um, going down the list here. Um, to kind of, you know, depending on which game you're looking at, always I always tend to go back to that matchup sheet. I use this a lot as well when I'm doing my against the spread bets as well. Um, for the week, I usually try and bet on three or four games, parlay a couple of them, and I provide that insight in the uh, Roto Pros member chat room as well over on Slack chat. So moving on, uh, before I get into the individual positions, we've got uh, salary trends, and this is something I like to look at every week. So just kind of starting at the top, I like to look at whose prices of you know trending up. So as you can see, uh, he came in and started last week with Randall Cobb and Allison out is Marquez Valdez Scantlin. He's up 1,300 bucks from near minimum price last week. Still a pretty good value if those two receivers are out. So keep an eye on that. Travis Travis Kelsey, Alfred Morris, and Cameron Brait have all gone up 1,100 dollars since their last game. Um, so definitely something to keep in mind. In on the other end of things, if you do create your own copy of this cheat sheet, which you do that by going up to file, make a copy, 
and you can name it whatever you want and click OK. That's going to give you the ability to sort columns, rows, um, as well as just kind of change things around if you'd like. So what you can do once you've done that is click anywhere in this column B. Um, can also do it here. We're going to sort A to Z, which would be so we're going to go up to data and then we're going to sort A to Z and that's going to just kind of show us um, on the other end of things whose prices have come down. So you can see Ezekiel Elliott's has come down, Ryan Fitzpatrick, he's not starting anymore, Tevin Coleman's down $1,000 with uh, Devonta Freeman back, um, Dask, Dak Prescott, Philip Rivers, and you can just kind of look at it that way and see whose prices on the other end have gone down. So it's the same thing for FanDuel. As you can see, Jameis Winston's gone up $1,200. He's getting his first start of the season. I'm going to talk about him here in a little bit as well. Greg Olson's back in the mix now. He's gone up $900. Uh, should start this week. As you can see, Valdez Scantlin, he's up there as well. Eric Ebron, after a tremendous week last week, catching two touchdowns. And then we go into snap count. So this is just your snap count percentage, how much a player's been on the field for a team's offensive snaps. So I've got it sorted um, highest to lowest for each individual team. So you can go through Arizona. You can look at who's getting the most snaps. Um, you know, wide receivers. You can see Larry Fitzgerald. Uh, Chad Williams is right up there over 80%. Um, one that I'm looking at this week as a value play, I'll touch on him a little bit more, is Christian Kirk uh, for GPPs. He's really cheap. He has seen his go down a bit. As you can see, he's under 70% the last two weeks, but definitely someone I'm looking at. So you can go through and you can search any team and look at their uh, snap counts. And then uh, targets is the next thing I look at. Um, so right now I've got it sorted by average per game. So as you can see, there are currently 12 receivers that are averaging over 10 targets per game. And if you would like to, you know, maybe go by team, um, you can take that average. So as long as you're sorted by highest to lowest in this column, um, average targets per game, by going data, Z to A, you can then go over to team and click on data again and sort A to Z. So then you've now got it sorted by most targets, average targets per game, sorted by each individual team. So then you can kind of go through and check out teams that maybe have split their targets up, as you can see with Arizona. Um, every, there's four guys that are averaging between four and five and a half, between four and a half, 4.4 and 5.4 targets per game. So they kind of spread it out quite a bit in Arizona. Whereas you look at a team like Atlanta here, and they've got Julio Jones at 11 targets per game, Sanu at six. Hooper at 5.4, and, and Calvin Ridley at 5.2. So um, Julio Jones get a large percentage of those targets for that for their team. So you can go through and you can search any individual team. If you want to go back and maybe sort by position, um, you can go to this average column, which is V. Go up to data. You can't see it here, but it's uh, one of the options just above um, what you can see in the screen. Data, Z to A. And then go over to position, which is column B and go up to data and sort either A to Z or Z to A. Um, doesn't really matter there. And this gives you running backs. So you can look at uh, the most targeted running backs. And then if you scroll down a little bit more, you can look at tight ends. And then down at the bottom again, you can uh, check out the wide receivers and who's leading in targets in that zone. So that's just another research tool that I use. Now both of these snap count and player targets will be in the individual players. So let's just dig into those now. So at the quarterback position this week, um, something I like to do on this sheet is label Sunday Night Football, Monday Night Football over on the left side. Thursday Night Football was there, but I remove those um, off the sheet once the Thursday Night Football game is over. So first of all, I'm looking at uh, for cash games are going to be in green and GPP plays are going to be in blue, um, just for reference there. So I'm looking at Matt Ryan and Kirk Cousins um, when I'm paying up. Kirk Cousins a little bit more on FanDuel because his price is a little bit lower, so we can save a little bit there. And what I like with Cousins is that Minnesota has pretty much shown zero run game. They're second last in the league when it comes to rushing yards per game, right around 65 yards per game. So he's thrown a ton. Um, as you can see, when you move over into these 2018 stats in the neon green here, he's attempted 226 passes this year, third behind only uh, Andrew Luck and... Joe Flacco down here so he, what I like about that is he's attempting a lot of throws but he's also completing a lot he's at 71 percent right now 1688 yards 11 touchdowns um, the yards per attempt maybe aren't up there in the eight nine range but seven and a half still pretty good and he's averaging 337 yards passing per game um, on DraftKings that's key because that 300 yards gets you the bonus 
And just with, even though they are 10.5 point favorites, without a run game, they're just going to keep throwing. Um, so definitely looking at him from a cash game perspective this week. I don't think he's going to be very high owned in cash because a lot of people are going to be turning to either A, Matt Ryan in that game I talked about with a high 57.5 over under against Tampa Bay, who's been bad against every single position. They've given up the most points against quarterbacks, fantasy points against quarterbacks this season. Um, he's got some really good targets to throw to in uh, Julio Jones, who I talked about, leads the team in targets. Then you got uh, Mohamed Sanu, Calvin Ridley, the rookie, um, and even Austin Hooper, who he's looking to uh, in the red zone. He's got Devontae Freeman back, who's a good pass catching back, and then Tevin Coleman in the backfield as well catches some balls too. So he's got uh, excellent targets, high scoring game. And it's a, something else I look at when I look at cash games is a, is a close spread. So it's only a, a three-point spread there. Um, so the game should be close throughout. Um, and the reason I think that is because my other cash game um, down here a bit, I haven't highlighted him yet, I'm going to do so right now, is Jameis Winston if you're looking to go cheap. Only 5800 on DraftKings, 7400 on FanDuel. He's in that same game. He's making his first start of the season. He came back last week and just kind of going and looking at the game logs here just search up Winston he came in for Ryan Fitzpatrick last week and while he did throw two interceptions he completed 16 to 20 passes for 80 percent which was good to see getting his first action of the season picked up a touchdown averaged over seven yards per attempt um, and that's against against a tough Bears defense uh, this week he's facing an Atlanta defense going back to the sheet who ranks 30th who's getting out of the third most fantasy points to quarterbacks this season um, they've got injuries to Ken O'Neill, Deion Jones, Ricardo Allen, just all their pretty much starters um, looking at linebacker safety and the cornerback position are injured. So definitely looking at Jameis Winston on the cheap. So I think a lot of people are going to be going Matt Ryan and Jameis Winston for the most part. Um, Cousins is going to be a little bit lower owned. Another one I'm looking at is Ben Roethlisberger. They are currently dogs against Cincinnati. Um, he gets a lot of attempts as well. He's at 215 for the season. The yards are up there. The completion percentage is down, but he's got two elite receivers in Antonio Brown and Juju Smith-Schuster, who are, I believe, tied for first as Antonio Brown in targets, and I think Juju Smith-Schuster. We're just going to go check that out here quick. Go check out the wide receiver position like I mentioned before. So we've got Antonio Brown tied with Adam Thielen, and then we've got uh, Juju Smith-Schuster down here. He is 10th um, in targets at 10.6 per game. So they've got two wide receivers that are averaging over 10.6 per game when looking at targets. So I think uh, Ben Roethlisberger makes some sense as well. Um, he's not where I'm going, but I, I highlighted him green because he is viable this week. Cam Newton makes sense as well. Um, something, you know, he's only 6,100 on DraftKings. 8400 on FanDuel. I thought that would be flip-flopped a bit because you do get the the bonus on on DraftKings. Actually, that's probably why he's a little bit cheaper on DraftKings because he doesn't get that 300-yard bonus. We're going to go look at him real quick here. He's only done that once in four games this season, got that 300-yard bonus, but where he he has thrown multiple touchdowns in three straight games and looking at value, I always look for a three times value on DraftKings, which at 6.1 that's just over 18 points. He's done that in all four games this season. So he's hit cash value every single game on DraftKings. Going over and looking at FanDuel, there's a lineup that I'm just kind of putting together. Looks like we've got some questionable guys. I look for two times value on FanDuel. And as you can see, two times at, at 16 16.8 points. So yeah, he's done. He's hit cash value every single week this season. He gives you that running ability. He is like their goal line running back, really, essentially. Um, so he gives you that touchdown upside as well. So definitely looking at him for cash games. And I like to uh, run him naked. And what that means is just not pairing him with one of his wide receivers. Whereas Matt Ryan, I'd like to get Julio Jones, Kirk Cousins, Adam Thielen, Ben Roethlisberger. Like I said, either Antonio Brown or Juju Smith-Schuster, Jameis Winston, uh, Mike Evans. I always like to get that correlation wide receiver. Where Cam Newton is one of the guys with his rushing ability where I don't necessarily... Um, pair him with his one of his receiving options, and just and that's what we call uh, running him naked in cash games or even GPPs. So for uh, GPP, um, I'm looking at uh, Deshaun Watson this week at 6,400 on DraftKings, 8,100 on FanDuel. Uh, the only thing concerning here is that it's a big spread, 
and uh, Lamar Miller is going to be back. And if he's not 100% healthy, Alfred Blue will be in there. So they could get a lot of the run game going. And the matchup's not very good. Buffalo's actually ranked sixth against uh, quarterbacks when it comes to fantasy points this season. And Deshaun Watson just hasn't been getting a lot of touchdowns in the passing game. So that's what, kind of why I got him as a GPP because I think he's going to be a little bit low-owned going and looking at... Uh, He's hit the 300, so one thing about him with that upside, he's maybe not getting the touchdowns, but he's getting you the bonuses. Um, he's got you 300-plus yards in four straight weeks now, 350-plus um, or 375-plus in three straight weeks, which has been really good, but he, he's just not getting the touchdowns, which touchdowns are kind of unpredictable at times, so I do see you know a three-touchdown game coming for him. He's got uh, Will Fuller, DeAndre Hopkins, and now Kiki Kute, who's uh, emerged as a rookie as well. He's played two games. And he's, faced, he's got a ton of targets. So he does have some targets. He's got 25-plus points on DraftKings in four straight games. And for GPPs, I'm kind of looking at that four times value, which would put you in that 200-point range if you got four times value from your lineup. And that's about 24, 25 points. As you can see, he's hit that in uh, four straight games as well. So the upside is definitely there for Deshaun Watson. And he's a little bit cheaper than some of these top quarterbacks this week on the main slate. Next up, looking at Jared Goff a little bit. Like I said, it's his first game in snow. That's kind of narrative-driven. But he has been absolutely amazing this season. We'll go look at his game logs here for a minute. Even with an elite run game with Todd Gurley in there, um, the thing with that is he's an elite pass catcher as well. Uh, he's hit 300-plus yards, so he's got that bonus on draft. He showed five touchdown upside. Um, he's more in that 2-3 to three is where you kind of put him at. Denver's defense has been a little bit tougher, but they have given up some yards. And six times four with, with that value, again, is 24 points. So he maybe didn't hit that last week against Seattle. Um, Gurley rushed for three touchdowns, so he kind of took away Goff's touchdown upside. But this week against Denver, um, go back and look at the matchup against Denver here real quick. Yeah, they've been a little bit tough against uh, QBs and wide receivers, whereas, you know, it could be a Todd Gurley day again. So that kind of leaves Goff. Normally at his price, I would look at him in cash games, but uh, this week I'm going to be GPPs only. Um, if Denver manages to shut down Todd Gurley, which has to be their game plan, you would think. Goff has uh, um, some wide receivers you can get it to. Now, also going to want to check the status of Cooper Cup, um, who is, we'll just kind of go look at that right now. He's questionable for this week with a concussion. Uh, if he is in there, he's a great safety blanket for Goff. But if his wide receivers are going to be hurt, uh, Brandon Cooks is also questionable this week with a concussion. So both are kind of dealing with concussions. He was out last week. So if those two wide receivers are out, I'm probably going to end up avoiding Jared Goff. But if those guys get back in the lineup, I think Goff has the upside to throw in Robert Woods in there. And then, like I said, Todd Gurley is a pass catcher. The upside's definitely there for him to hit four to five times value. And then Russell Wilson. Um, he was dealing with an injury, hamstring injury, pretty much the whole season. So he's only rushed it, I believe, 11 times this year. So he's lost a little bit of his upside um, when it comes to rushing. But just at his price, especially on DraftKings at 5700 um, I think he's a good pivot off of Jameis Winston, who's going to be high-owned. And this is just, you know, to get that little bit of lower ownership, I think he can... You know, he's got the upside. We'll go look at his uh, game log here real quick. He's not getting you the 300-yard bonus. He's barely given 200 yards, but he's got multiple touchdowns in uh, three of his last four. They're playing over in Wembley in London this week against Oakland, and that's kind of really what I'm looking at this week. So he needs about 18 points um, to 22, 23 points at his price. He hasn't hit that, so it's very risky. So I think a lot of people will stay away. But we do know the upside with him. Tyler Lockett, Doug Baldwin's getting back. He only got one target last week, but I think they're going to try and get Doug Baldwin more involved this week. So you give him two wide receivers now, I think uh, Wilson has the upside, and especially at a very low ownership. So I don't think you're going to need a lot of exposure. If you're multi-entering uh, some of these tournaments this week, you're not going to need a lot of exposure of Russell Wilson to have more than the field. And I think it makes sense uh, if he's going to be low owned. He does have the upside to hit. I mean, they've, they're projected for 25 plus points, and Oakland has given up a ton of yards this season as well. So that kind of covers the quarterback position. So we're going to go on to running backs now. Um, if you can afford it, Todd Gurley, uh, 10K on DraftKings, 9,500 on FanDuel. There is enough value out there. 
um, you can make it happen. It makes your cash lineups, I guess, a little bit more risky. But like I said, Denver's been good against the quarterback um, and the wide receivers. And if Cup is out as well as Brandon Cooks again, or even if they're just limited and they're only going to play, say, 60 70% of the snaps, Todd Gurley could see another 2-3 touchdown game as Denver ranks 24th against the running back this year. So that price maybe seems crazy high, but he's definitely the most productive and safest running back on the board week in and week out. And I have already constructed a few lineups, and they do look cash, like they could work in cash as well. So Todd Gurley is definitely an option. Going over and looking at he's already got seven touchdowns on the season, 415 yards. So he's, he's behind uh, Ezekiel Elliott, who's really the only... Um, option in that Dallas offense but uh, Todd Gurley with all those wide receivers that are getting 101 rushes and 415 yards and seven touchdowns is pretty amazing as you can see he's getting 87.6 percent of the running back touch share now that comes from my sheet now that we're in running backs something I provide every week as well as a running back touch share so I go through week by week uh, break down every team how many carries yards touchdowns targets receptions yards and touchdowns add up those total touches the total for the team, and then how much share each running back every week gets. So you can go through each individual week and look at team by team if you want, or you can look at the main sheet. As you can see, Todd Gurley's got 100% of the touches in the backfield for the Rams each of the last two weeks. You can go through and you can search every running back, so you can kind of look for a trend. Um, You know, maybe a running back that's starting to get more, and uh, we'll touch on this just a little bit more coming up here. The other uh, cash game guy I'm looking at is James Conner this week, um, and we'll go look at his. He's been getting, with Lev Bell out, he's been getting pretty much all the share in the backfield. 83% last week, but he's averaging over 91% on the season. Had a really good week last week. They wanted to get him more involved. He did get more involved, um, and at his little bit of a discount, you know, if you can't afford Todd Gurley, the next guy I'm going down to is uh, – Connor at 7,700 on DraftKings, 8,200 on FanDuel. I would more pay up $1,300 more and go to Todd Gurley on FanDuel, but on DraftKings, uh, Connor's definitely in play in cash games this week. Look for, to him in GPPs as well. Um, going down a bit, uh, Leonard Fournette is out again, so TJ Yeldon makes sense in that mid 6K range on DraftKings, 7,100 on FanDuel. He's averaging 6.5 targets per game. Bortles has been dumping it off to him. He's getting touchdowns in the receiving game. Hasn't been great um, from a rushing standpoint, but uh, they're usually, you know, um, that like I said, he's getting the targets, which is nice to see as well. David Johnson's one who is really standing out to me this week against Minnesota, and the reason for that is Minnesota's been tough against the rush, but they have given up yards. I believe 281 yards receiving to running backs, which is like right around 10th most I believe so far this year. And David Johnson's price still is down, especially on DraftKings under 6K. It just seems like a, a bargain this week from a points per dollar perspective. And we're just going to go look at him on the running back touch share. What stands out is he was only getting under 70% in the first two weeks. Everyone's like, well, what the heck? You know, they don't have a great offense. Why are they not feeding their best player? Well, since then, um, he has trended up 72% in week three, 86% week four, and then 95% last week so he they've been getting him uh the ball more which makes a ton of sense as he is their most talented player 18 carries 22 carries the last two weeks he's not getting the yards yet only averaging three yards per carry and you know that might not go up too much against minnesota this week but what i'm looking for is around five targets this week they're going to get him the ball in the passing game and just at his price at 5900 he makes a lot of sense uh, if you're trying to go a little bit more bounced in cash games and I don't think he's going to be very high-owned either um, going up against the Vikings. Um, so he makes a lot of sense in GPPs as well. Naheem Hines is a guy that I really like at 5100 6300 on FanDuel. Um, go to look at him on the running back touch share sheet. Yeah, he went from getting uh, 20% in Week 2 to 55 56% in Weeks 3 and 4, up to 73% last week in that Colts. He got 15 carries last week, so that was a season high for him. So he's he's another guy that um, he's more suited for DraftKings where it's full PPR because he's averaging seven targets per week, um, which is which is really good. He's right up there in the leaders and running backs when looking at targets. So at 5100, he makes sense at a point per uh, reception there. 29 receptions for 164 yards and two touchdowns going up against the Jets, who have been about middle of the league uh, in defense versus. Uh, 
running backs when it comes to fantasy points. So definitely looking at him. And that's kind of really all I'm looking at. Not a whole lot of running backs I'm putting in my player pool this week. Uh, for GPPs, I'm mixing in, um, no pun intended, Joe Mixon um, against Pittsburgh. They've been tough against the run, but he is the bell cow back. He's going to get uh, 85. Like you can see, he's got 84% of the touch share this season. Gio Bernard is out, so he's probably going to be more in that 90% range this week. And he catches the ball really well. He's he's a good uh, receiver out of the backfield as well. Melvin Gordon going against Cleveland. Um, he's been excellent when it comes to a pass catcher this season. 7.6 targets per game. And then Christian McCaffrey, who's just been elite all around. Um, if you're going away from Todd Gurley, you're looking for a pivot in GPPs. I like McCaffrey and Gordon this week. And then Mixon as well kind of guys that I'm looking at. Some of the running backs that I usually like to target every week, like Shoney Michelle, James White, especially on DraftKings, they're on the Sunday night slate. So if you're playing that uh, prime time or uh, slate, definitely look at James White. His price has gone up, um, but he just catches so many passes at 8.8 targets per game, which is up there. When you, when you Including wide receivers, he's up there in the top 15 among all players in the league. He's kind of in that Tom Brady circle of trust. So definitely look to him this week. So moving on to wide receivers, something that I look at when uh, breaking down my wide receivers is, um, especially when going cash versus GPP, is catch rate. Um, not only how many targets they're getting or the snap count, making sure that they're on the field, but I also want to make sure they're catching balls. So something I've talked about a little bit this week is Adam Thielen versus Antonio Brown. They've both got 66 targets on the season, averaging 13 per game, but Thielen is going to be my cash pick over Antonio Brown, uh, not just because of the slight discount here, but because he's catching 71% of his balls um, versus Antonio Brown's only a 53% catch rate. So that just, I, I'm pretty sure that's going to be coming up. I mean, he's an elite wide receiver, and him and Ben just maybe haven't been on the exact same page so far this year. But uh, just seeing those numbers at almost a 20% difference in catch rate, I'm definitely looking to Adam Thielen. He set a record last week. He's the first wide receiver in the Pro Bowl era to start a season with five straight 100-yard receiving games. That's just absolutely incredible. Average 117 receiving yards per game. He's clearly the number one target for uh, Kirk Cousins this, this year for the Vikings. And something I look at there as well is that Stephon Diggs playing on the outside is always going to draw the... Um, the best coverage guy, and this week that is going to be Patrick Peterson, who's an elite corner, probably top three cover corner in the league. Um, so that's going to give, I think, even more opportunity to Adam Thielen to get six straight 100-yard games. Um, he's going to get 10-plus targets once again this week just because a lot of the coverage going to is going to take Stephon Diggs out of the game. Not that Diggs isn't a good GPP play, but uh, for cash games, Adam Thielen is definitely worth paying up for that price. So I think it's the highest price he's actually ever been on either of these sites, but uh, he's totally justified it as uh, one of the top receivers. I wrote about it in my recap article last week that he's one of the best wide receivers in the league, and they're one of the best um, combos in the league, and they really they really help each other, especially in these matchups where Diggs is going to take on the, the worst cover, or, you know, the best cover guy for the other team. Um, Thielen really opens it up, and, you know, they just work well together. Anyways, moving on, um, done being a homer here with the Vikings. Uh, Mike Evans for Tampa Bay, something, you know, he's never had over a 55% catch rate throughout his four previous seasons. He, even without Jameis Winston in the lineup, Ryan Fitzpatrick was going off early in the season. He's catching 74% of his balls right now, so that puts him up in the cash game um, perspective for me using him. It's a great matchup, like I said. Atlanta ranks 27th against wide receivers this year, giving up a ton of yards with their banged up secondary. He's averaged over 100 yards per game, and uh, he's clearly the number one. And, uh, you know, looking back at Jameis Winston, loves targeting uh, Mike Evans. So the catch rate might go down a little bit, uh, depending on how accurate uh, Winston is in his first start. But like I said, last week he completed 16 to 20 passes, which is 80%, which is really good. So if he continues that trend, uh, Mike Evans is definitely in play for cash games this week, getting exposure to that really high-scoring game. DeAndre Hopkins, um, I got him highlighted here. I'm going to be changing that to GPP. I just really don't like the matchup against Tredavious White. Um, a lot of that, uh, I think that brings Will Fuller at a little bit cheaper price into the fold as a cash game play this week at 6800 on DraftKings, 7300 on FanDuel against Buffalo. Just because, you know, the same reason as I talked about Thielen, um, 
DeAndre Hopkins is going to take Tredavious White, who's been shown elite corner as a rookie, is going to move some of that over to Will Fuller. And then the other guy that I'm looking at, just sticking with the same team, is Kiki Kute. And just going and looking at his game logs here, he's played two games so far. He's questionable this week, but I think uh, I heard that he is going to play. He was limited to practice, but he should get in there. What really stands out to me, um, coming out of the slot for Kute, is when Fuller and Hopkins are getting a lot of the top corners on the outside, Kute can take advantage of the slot, and he has done that. He's He's got 22 targets in his first two games, caught 6 of 7 last week, 11 of 15 the week before, scored his first touchdown last week, and he's averaging just under 10 yards per reception, um, which is really good. So I don't think it's sustainable to, to have around that uh, 15 to 25 fantasy points, but at 4,600, I, I think if he has one more good game, he's going to be in that mid-5 to 6K range moving forward. So we're going to want to get advantage, you know, get exposure to him now before that price jumps. Juju Smith-Schuster talked about him. Uh, Antonio Brown is going to get uh, top... He's going to face the top corner. Um, excuse me. Um, Juju Smith-Schuster, he's only caught 66%, and a lot of that has to do with Ben as well. He just hasn't been as accurate this season. But uh, a guy that's in that 7K range, getting over 10 targets per game, I'll look at him every week. Talked about Will Fuller. Tyler Boyd, same thing going up against Pittsburgh. Uh, A.J. Green's a little more expensive. Tyler Boyd has been getting, I, they're right around, uh, they both got 43 targets on the season. Uh, Boyd has caught almost 70% of his balls. He's been really good in the offense. He's been out there 80% of the snaps. So at his price, he's definitely cash viable until, you know, I'll probably keep him in cash until he's up into that 7,000 7, range, 7,500 plus on, uh, on FanDuel. Michael Crabtree just seems too cheap uh, going up against Tennessee. He's getting a ton of targets in that offense. He's not catching a lot of them right now, um, but I definitely like his uh, his price this week on DraftKings at 4700 especially if you're going. We're going to have to look for some value guys this week with Todd Gurley being so expensive. Um, if you want to get Todd Gurley in cash, this is kind of the area we're going to have to look to for two of our wide receivers this week, and Crabtree definitely stands out. I already talked about uh, Kute as well. Um, I think we can also consider Mohamed Sanu. I haven't got him on there, but I think we can also consider him. The targets he's been getting in the offense and getting more involved. And then going down, another one. I uh, just want to go look at it here. Yellow are going to be guys that I'm looking at for value plays. Chester Rogers is a player that I'm going to look at. Like I said, Andrew Luck leads the league in passing attempts this season. They, like Minnesota, don't have a run game really <laughs> at all, so it's going to lead to a lot of passes. And Chester Rogers, if he keeps getting 10-plus targets every game, 4,500 is a bargain for him. He hasn't turned it into a lot of yards yet, but uh, I'll take 14 fantasy points from him. You know, for cash games especially, he only needs... About 14, 15 points for cash games. So, uh, you know, if he's going to catch 8 of 11 for 66 yards, doesn't seem like a big game. But for cash, I mean, that's hitting value. He scores a touchdown, he's crushing value. So he's one that I'll look at in the value range in cash. Uh, these guys are more GPP. Mike Williams got touchdown upside in the Chargers offense. And Christian Kirk, I mentioned him when looking at the snap count percentage. His has gone down a little bit this week, uh, over the last two weeks, sorry. But uh, I like his matchup this week. He's probably going to see Mike Hughes, who's probably one of the Vikings' worst corners this season. None of them have been, really been great. Um, but he's catching 73% of his balls. He's a rookie, um, rookie quarterback, rookie wide receiver, so that kind of leaves him as a GPP. It's just we don't know a whole lot of the opportunities there so far. So that's kind of where I'm looking at there. Um, talked about Russell Wilson as a GPP quarterback. Tyler Lockett is definitely someone I'm looking at. Um, in that high score in Tampa Bay Atlanta game, Deshaun Jackson is going to be, he's always a home run play, so GPP for me. Calvin Ridley on the other side of the ball. Um, something that we've seen with him is he had a couple really good games. The ownership spiked last week. He let us down catching 4 or 5 for 38. Now, I think a lot of people, recency bias is huge for GPPs, so um, targeting players coming off a bad game or a couple bad games getting them at low ownership, the guys that have big upside, are definitely a way to go in GPP. So Ridley's ownership should definitely be cut in half from last week. Definitely, um, maybe not because it's such a high-scoring game, but he's still a high upside guy. He's not going to be near owned as he was last week. I mean, look at Robbie Anderson. He had like three or four bad games to start the season, 
and he was like half percent ownership last week in GPPs, and he was in the Millie, Millie Maker winning lineup. He was in winning lineups across all contests on DraftKings and FanDuel. So finding that uh, 1% own guy may not seem that easy, but really you're just looking to take a shot with someone who is come, who's got upside. We know he's got upside. He showed it last year, like I'm talking Robbie Anderson still. But, you know, coming off of two or three or four bad games, or if you want to look at someone low-owned in the high um, dollar tier, someone that maybe is coming off of a couple bad matchups against some really good corners, hasn't really produced. Julio Jones comes to mind, not maybe this week because, because of the high-scoring game, but uh, um, he just hasn't scored a touchdown yet, so people are going to start looking at that and, you know, avoid him. So you want to get on the players that people are avoiding that have upside. We know they have upside, so that's kind of the way I look at GPPs is attacking recency bias and using it to our advantage. So going across to the tight end position now, just it's an absolute mess. The the Ertz, Kelsey, Gronk, and Kittle are the high, four highest priced tight ends this week, all on uh, primetime slates. Looking at the main slate, Eric Ebron is the highest priced tight end on the slate, which just seems absolutely crazy to me. Um, he's a GPP play just because of that high price, and probably his ownership is going to be up there. So I'm only looking at him from a cash game. Like I said, if you're going with Todd Gurley in cash this week, you're going to need to spend down. So something I'm looking at is the status of O.J. Howard. I want to see how he practices today, even tomorrow. And if he's going to be out, Cameron Braid's definitely up there. He gets a lot of targets in the red zone. Um, Looking at the last two years, only Mike Evans had more red zone targets than him last year. And then the year before that, he actually tied... Mike Evans with 19 red zone targets with Jameis Winston behind center. So he's got a ton of touchdown upside, and he's going to get more opportunity if O.J. Howard is out this week. And I've got him labeled as out just because it didn't look like it. Things were looking a little more promising, so pay attention to that. But he's going to get a lot more opportunities, and at 3,700 on DraftKings, 4,500 on FanDuel, it makes a lot of sense. Going to be getting back with uh, Trey Burton. The matchup isn't that great, but I do like the price, especially on DraftKings. In that Bears offense, um, Trubisky has started to show that he's going to be using Burton a little bit more, so especially in the red zone. So looking at that, Jordan Reed's coming off a bad week, but uh, definitely like uh, Carolina, the matchup against Carolina. If we go look at that a little bit more, Carolina's been really good against the running back, but they have really you know given up quite a bit of yards and fantasy points to the quarterback, wide receiver, and tight end position. So that's a direction I go. Um, Alex Smith hasn't been great getting the his wide receivers the ball. I think between Reed and Chris Thompson, they have more receptions than all the other wide receivers combined on the team. So. Uh, definitely look to Jordan Reed there coming off a bad game. He also makes sense in GPPs because he let everyone down last week as well on Monday night against New Orleans. So um, that recency bias comes in there, so definitely have a piece of him in GPPs as well when I'm spending up. Ebron and Cook I'm looking at. Uh, Ebron's going to be probably higher on coming off that two-touchdown game. Jared Cook's coming off a bad game, let everyone down last week as well at pretty high ownership. So getting back on him makes a lot of sense as well. Not the greatest matchup, so matchup combined with coming off a bad week, I think uh, Cook makes a nice pivot off of uh, Ebron and Reed as well. And then Kyle Rudolph and Greg Olson. Greg Olson, uh, kind of iffy, but he has shown to be you know like a security blanket for Cam Newton. And if he's fully healthy and back in there, his price is definitely going to start going up. So um, getting on him now makes a lot of sense before, you know, if he has a a touchdown and, you know, 60 to 80 yards this week, he's going to be in that 5K range with the vulnerability of the tight end position. So defenses this week, uh, the Bears are easily number one for me. Um, They lead the league in sacks with 18, or sorry, they're second in the league in sacks behind uh, the Steelers. They've got 11 takeaways. Um, the opponent's given away nine uh, balls, looking at Miami there. And so that's something I'd like to look at. So here, just to break this down a little bit, this is for the Chicago Bears defense, the passing any yards per game that they've allowed. So they're, they rank eighth, which is good. Um, the opponent has only got 192 yards passing per game, which is 26th. That's, that's bad for them, good for the Chicago defense. 
and they've really shut down the rush, number one team against the rush, which is good because Miami hasn't been great against the rush. They're only averaging 96 yards per game. So then points per game, Bears' defense has been second best, allowing just 16.3 per game, and Miami's been bad, only getting 19.8 points per game, uh, ranking 26. So then I get into the sacks, the takeaways, and this is when I look for a floor for cash games when looking at your defense, I'm looking at sacks. Um, takeaways are a little bit more unpredictable. Sacks are going to be there. And then uh, looking at sack rates, um, as you can see here, Chicago is fourth in sack rate while the uh, O-line for Miami is ranks 28. So you got a plus 24 there. So that's kind of what I look at uh, breaking down offense and defensive lines is uh, um, this differential. And green is obviously good. Anywhere on my sheet, green is going to be good. Red is going to be bad. So... Um, that they're really the only defense I'm looking at in cash games this week. But to pivot off them in GPPs, I'm looking at the Texans. They have a good matchup when it comes to O-line, D-line. I'm looking at the Ravens versus Tennessee. Um, the Ravens have 15 sacks this season, so they're right up there amongst the leaders in sacks. They've got a good matchup on O-line, D-line as well, so they could see uh, three, four sacks this week. And then Indianapolis as well. Um, they're, they've got 17 sacks, so they're third in the league in sacks, and they've got a really good matchup when it comes to O-line, D-line. Um, talked about the Jets' uh, O-line last week as well in one of my articles looking at defense, and uh, that's something I look at is that. And then the final tab here, um, I haven't completed it quite yet. Uh, as you can see, I've only got the combinations of Tampa Bay on here. I will be adding to these. Um, usually have three or four teams that I target in that sense. Um, so I like to put my combinations on here. So like Winston, Evans, and Brait, Winston, Jackson, and Brait, Winston, Evans, and Jackson, uh, Winston and Evans, Winston and Jackson. So I'm going to run a lot of combinations of Tampa Bay this week, as you can see. And it shows how much they're going to cost you on each site and the percent of the cap that they're going to use. So I'm going to have that for every single team that I'm looking at. So that you can just kind of compare... Um, which ones are going to be more value and which ones are going to cost you a lot more, which combinations when looking at quarterback wide receiver combinations or, or three-man combinations for GPPs. Just kind of gives you a little more insight into the research process um, when doing your GPP lineup construction. So that pretty much covers it this week. Thanks for watching the video. If you have any questions, um, jump over to the Rotopro Slack chat, pretty much in there 24-7. You can ask me any questions, private message me, get into the member chat. Um, we've got uh, uh, Hockey Talk chat. Now that hockey is going, we do articles. Me and Rob do articles every week. Rob does a video pretty much uh, every main slate in the morning. He does an article as well for NHL. Um, he does EPL and soccer. So we've got a lot going on um, over on the member chat room. And then if you're not a member, make sure to get over to rotopros.com, same place I showed you where the articles were, top right-hand corner, you're not going to see it here, big yellow, hit sign up, and uh, you can join us for a two-week trial. Come check everything out, get into that Slack chat, get a copy of the cheat sheets, check out all the, the articles are free, so you can go check out all the articles anytime, um, but definitely get into that Slack chat, a lot of help going on over there, individual coaching, uh, lineup construction for almost every sport out there, so... And finally, you can hit me up on Twitter. I'm at Jaeger underscore bombs nine. And uh, don't make sure to go out there, um, like the video, subscribe to our channel, hit the notification button. We got a ton of videos coming out. Usually, almost one every single day, if not like four or five times a week. We got videos coming out on the YouTube channel. If you sign up to those notifications, you'll get an email just kind of letting you know um, when they're coming out and and when to get on there. So. Thanks for supporting Rotor Pros and good luck this week, everyone.